My guest today is a stand-up comedian based out of New York. He competed in the Seattle International Comedy Competition and won the Chocolate Sundays Comedy Competition at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. I'm excited to welcome a man of legendary status, Quentin Jones. Yes, you have Quentin Jones here. Quentin Jones is honored to be here. Thanks for coming home. There was a time we didn't want to put Quentin Jones on this podcast. I've always wanted to put Quentin Jones on this no, podcast. No, Quentin Jones asked you. Okay, first of all, let's talk about why I'm talking in the third person. <laughs> Hold on. Pull that mic a little bit closer to you because okay, I got you. the people need to hear Quentin Jones. The people need to hear Quentin Jones. Coming to you live for the FM podcast. Quentin Jones, soon to be your favorite comedian that started in Seattle, living in New York right now. <laughs> no, but um, I think this started, I think there was like a show. I wanted to get on a show and I just thought it would sound, I would sound more important. It's like, hey, can I get on your show? If it was just like, hey, Quentin Jones wants to be on your show. <laughs> Like, I have a powerful name, and so you it's do. Like, yeah, it, it's. I mean, it, are you named like after it was Quincy Jones, like an inspiration? Or was no. It? So I, this is the true story um, of how I got my name. My mom wanted me, like my dad didn't care, and my mom wanted to name me Carl. Okay. And my aunt, my mom's sister, she's like, "That's like we're not naming my nephew that terrible name, Quentin." No, Carl. Carl. That was supposed to be oh, my name. Yeah, my mom gotcha. was set Sorry, I on stopped naming listening me Carl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you're just such a great host. But well, she, uh, sometimes with comics, dude, I'm like, I don't know if, like, comics have so much confidence in what they're saying, but a lot of times what they say, I'm like, this is funny to them, or it's, like, not worked out yeah. entirely. So it's just like. You're, you're just listening like, we're going to cut that part out. Yeah, it's not going to stay in the podcast. But this it, is key to my identity. <laughs> okay. I was supposed to be named Carl. And my mom was set on it. And my aunt's like, that's a terribly lame name. Sorry to any Carl's listening, but yeah. the name's pretty basic. Yeah. And so uh, she just looked up a magazine, like, baby names. She's like, my nephew's not going to be named something basic. So she went to, like, page three. And the top of page three was Quentin. Yeah. It was, like, the like number 31 most popular name in 1991 or okay. something like that. I don't know any black dudes named Quentin besides you. I Well, I guess Quentin Richardson. Quentin the, Richardson, uh, who was an inspiration because... He uh he used to date Brandy and I was in love with Brandy back in the day. Did he play at Michigan State? I I do not know. I just knew he was dating my crush when I was ten okay, years old. That makes sense. Yeah, he was he played for Orlando for a little bit. Phoenix. But yeah, he was a like a journeyman. He could shoot though. I saw him play it live or in person a few times, but that's a random fucking Yeah. Like, dude, we got a lot of shit to talk about. We do, um, man. Before it's, we do get into it. I'm sure this t first two minutes was just fucking crazy. Like some of the best content we've ever made. And if you've liked it so far, hit that like button, uh, notifications bell, subscribe to our channel. And then also, if you can throw a comment, just say something stupid, whatever. Like, you know, say something to Quentin Jones, whatever. It helps us with the algorithm so new people see the video, the content. So, yeah, do that. It's uh, at Fatim and Friends, but okay. So you you're here visiting from New York. Quinn yeah, Jones man. hit me up, saying like announcing his his <laughs> presence back in the his scene. arrival. I've, I've returned to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Yes. How is it being back, and what what's New York been like? Um, it's 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 good being back. Um, I think when I first moved to New York, just when you go to a different city, it's like you're starting over. No one gives a damn about what you did. No one cares that. I'm past that Tacoma Comedy Club, or I like no one especially cares about in the, New York. Yeah, no one cares about the West Coast stuff. They're like, what? Do you, like, they, they've heard of none of it. So, it was tough. So, uh, actually, when I booked this trip two months ago, I was like really down on myself. It was really? like I'm doing open mics where I'm not getting any legs on my material, and I was like, I just gotta go back to Seattle, or I meant something, and uh, and you just don't that. have any friends out there, like like. At least here, every room you go in, you know some people. Mm -hmm. Whereas there, it's like you you have friends that are there, but not necessarily in the same spots that you're going to. Yeah, they're they're getting the spots I want to be at, mm -hmm. and they can't really help me because it's like they tell the booker, "Oh, this is my friend Quentin. He's really funny." And Booker's like, "All right, they go. We'll send us your avails. We'll get back to you." They don't. They don't get back to you. Any comedians listening, they never get back to you. Yeah, but um. <laughs> so what's the process to like get through that? It's it's fucking magic. I, I mean, so I'm a regular at the Grizzly Pair, which mm -hmm. is on McDougal. Uh, I've been there. Yeah, next to one of the most popular. Literally, their business model is people who can't get tickets to the cellar go to the Grizzly Pair. Yeah. And how I got past there was literally I was going to support a friend, mm -hmm. and 
I like meet the guy. I'm like, hey, I'm a comic. I just want to sit in the back. My friend's on the show. He's like, what's your name? And I'm like, my name is Quentin Jones. He's like, I heard of you. You're hosting. And I just like that quick. What was his name? His name's Kenny Warren. Shout out to Kenny Warren. I think I might know him, actually. Yeah. And so he's like, I host the show and I like do great. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I keep coming back. So then that's how I started getting two or three spots a week at the Grizzly Pair. And But there's people like, oh, I go to the Grizzly Pair open mic. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so I can't even give people a path to get past or get more time. You just got to, I would just say, don't get lazy. Put yourself out there. And that's how the last two months there has been. It's just go out there. It's going to suck. Every night you're not going to get something. But the nights you do get something matter. Yeah. So just keep grinding in New York. It's all about, I hate to say it, it's all about the grind. It's all about meeting people and making a name for yourself. And I think. At well, this it's point, weird, too, because you don't like here. It's you got to get. Uh, like you, if you start doing well at mics and shit, then you start getting shows. But like Doesn't there, it, it's almost like you skip that step. Like it's it, you it's, need to hang out and then. But you also need to be able to back up what you're doing on stage. Yeah, you need to back up the talk, and then just one day. Which in your case, there's yeah, there's, there's I mean, some there's talk. Back. Yeah, I mean, I not in talk. your case, but in Quentin Jones' case. Well, yeah, Quentin Jones gonna talk. Quentin Jones, what he brings to the Quentin Jones knows he has theater talent minimum. Yeah. I will say that <laughs> on this podcast. Listen to this in thirty years, like damn, he really is doing theaters. But like, I, I have supreme confidence in what it, I can do, and I was like that year one, which turned people off of me. But mm-hmm. it hasn't where does changed. that come from? What I think. Um, I am religious, and, and I, I want to come back to New York. But I just yeah. this was one of my questions for you: is you, some might say you have more confidence than talent. Yeah, they're wrong. Okay, <laughs> um, I would say, and talent. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just asking, where does it come from? Um, I am a religious person. I know it's 2022. Or I'm a religious person, and there has been many times in my life where I've been in the situation where it's like, so let's go back a bit. I got kicked out of college three different times. Really? Yeah, I got kicked From out. Michigan? University of Michigan. I got huh. kicked out for grades. For grades? Yeah. And you were engineering? Yeah. Okay. Actually, it wasn't even engineering. I got kicked out because I couldn't write a paper. And anyone who's ever texted me knows I'm notorious for typos. Okay. So it, it makes sense. But I got kicked out three different times. And even after the third time, I was like, I'm still going to get a job at Microsoft. Yeah. And people are like, you're fucking crazy. But fast forward... The first job I get after graduating University of Michigan finally is to work at Microsoft. Okay. Like when I call shots, I don't call shots blindly. I call shots because something in me tells me, hey, this is what's going to happen. So Was that the job you just lost though? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I left we were Microsoft. talking about that the other night. Yeah, I left Microsoft uh, to pursue my dream in comedy. And then five months later, pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the job I lost recently was at Nordstrom. And that was completely my fault. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, like uh, I didn't know you were working there. Yeah, like, it was as a software engineer. I wasn't folding pants. Yeah, but yeah. I was I was there. I was in their payment division, and it was bad. I would say I worked nine to five, kinda. And when I say nine to five, I mean nine Pacific to five Eastern. Yeah. So, <laughs> so noon to five. It noon. It was, it was it was like I had a meeting at noon, and then after the noon meeting, it's like all right, let me take a nap, and then let me code for like an hour and a half, and then let me go to the gym, and then let me like check in on some. Like it, I wasn't doing. Dude, there, I don't know how you in New York like you do anything. It, everything takes so much time. Like just getting on the subway and like getting from place to place. Like I always heard with New York, like you you go spot to spot to spot. I'm like, how the fuck do you even? Maybe if you have like a, a dirt bike or something, you can well, get. Well, in Manhattan, is, so the train system in New York, everything's based around Manhattan. So once you're in Manhattan, you can go from uptown to Lower East Side to over here to over there. Yeah. It's all like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. But I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. And like if it's you It's like 40 do, minutes in. Yeah. Or it's not even 40 minutes in. It's 40 minutes to get across Brooklyn. Yeah. So you'll think, oh, I got this spot in Brooklyn and this spot in Brooklyn. And it'll take you longer to get to like, you know, Harlem. Like it'll take you longer to get to like a shorter time to get to Harlem than to get to that spot in Brooklyn because mm-hmm. you have to like go to Manhattan and like go back. Yeah, and the transfers and all that shit. It's and you don't have cell service on the train, right? Uh, it's it's if you're in between stations, you don't have any. Yeah, but once you get to a station, like powers back up. It's super annoying though. You get used to it. Yeah, where but like I just I fucking sat there just bored out of my mind. Well, I treat like, I treat my subway rides like a plane ride, where it's like let me download, you know, like so. Say uh, I was watching uh, Stranger Things, mm-hmm. and I download like four episodes of Stranger Things, and I would get through them on my subway ride. Yeah. So you just 
I find them peaceful. Um, it I, was nice, just yeah. but you also can't entirely check out, like because no. you'll miss your stop, and it's not. It, I mean. It's just, and your battery fucking runs out if you don't have, like, a, a back. No, you got to have, like, I feel like when you leave the house in New York, you kind of have to leave, like, a Boy Scout. Like, you yeah. got to, you know, especially me, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm like, I got to have my water. I got to have my healthy snacks. I got to have my backup charger. I got to have, or I got to make sure that my phone's charged, and I got to have my backup charger and a charger because you're waiting on time at the spots. Like, you got to have, like, all this stuff. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And then you look like a douchebag if you're, or weird if you're walking in with a fucking backpack somewhere. Like people I don't look, care, man. Yeah. I walk in with my backpack filled to the brim. Yeah. I in, It was summertime, and so a lot of comedy places, I mean, you work at Laughs, you know, they don't want you to wear shorts. But if you wear yeah. shorts on the subway in New York, like, it's like you, like, pissed your pants. That's how hot it is if you wear pants. So yeah. it's like I wear shorts, and I had to keep my pants for when I got on stage at the Grizzly Pair because they don't let you wear shorts on yeah. stage. And I just didn't care because I'm not I'm not there to appease random people on the subway. Yeah. And, two, there's no way I'm the weirdest person they've seen on that subway Wait, today. Wait, it's weird to wear shorts on the subway in New York? No, but it's like if I have a bag full of stuff oh, gotcha, for gotcha. comedy, yeah, was that's like, the least I, weird thing they've seen that, today. If that's fucking weird to wear shorts on the subway in New York, I'm never moving to New York. Like, yeah, no. That's, no it's, it, it, like I've seen women where not only they weren't, like their cheeks, like, their butt cheeks are on the subway. I'm like, you got something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, just like, ew. Like, I get you want to look cute for wherever you're going, your little rooftop party, but don't put your cheeks on that seat. That's the piece in New York that, like, sucks is, like, when you're trying to get somewhere, if you, like, those girls, they they want to get dressed up, and they have to go on the subway with every creepy person possible, and you see it with those girls, like, they're they're dolled up. And, yeah. And, I mean, anybody, really, and just, like, everybody's checking them out and shit. And, I mean, I no. think some of them like it, but then... It's, it's like it gets to the point where I've seen people like I've seen like women like her tits are out and she's like in front of me and out of respect I'm like I'm just gonna look over here like tits are in my face I'm like it's rude if I just stare and then you at just hear the dude breathing next to you just staring down it's at like them. yo bro no it's um <laughs> it's 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 a crazy city man and then especially when you like I said I live in Brooklyn and they're like trying to go like uptown or some stuff you see women like on that subway dolled up it's like you walk through like I live in the hood of Brooklyn yeah. To the point where I'm like, I've seen people get on my station. Like, you walk through some hood shit just yeah. like that. There's you are there's brave. parts of Brooklyn that like, I I mean, I was on a bus stop. I did that uh, tiny oh, cupboard. See, room. that's the problem. You oh, not bus stop, uh, train stop. Okay, and, and the train was like running late. It was the one time, not one time, but like probably the the time in New York where I was there. I was like, fuck, man, I don't know if I'm cut out for this because it was the show got out at like. I don't know, one or two. Mm -hmm. It was tiny cupboard, got up on the train. And the tiny cupboard is in the hood. Yeah. Like, don't let the pink background and all that for you. Yeah. The tiny cupboard is in the hood to the point where it's like, it's in a neighborhood called Brownsville. And when I moved to New York, people were like, oh, don't live in Brownsville. Yeah. Like, so that's where tiny cupboard is on the cusp of that. I'll let you finish. No, it just, that's exactly how I felt. It is uh, comforting to have you say those words instead of me. Yeah. It's but okay. uh, <laughs> I go up on the train, like, platform. And those trains, like, you have no, like, if they're running late or there's an issue, like, you have no, con it, this, this, the sign keeps changing to, like, 15 minutes yep. to 20 oh, minutes or whatever. Every, every, yeah. It was fucking freezing cold. I, like, hadn't prepped or whatever. My phone's dying. Yeah. And I looked at, like, Uber prices. It was, like, $70 <laughs> to get downtown. And there was some dude, he was just hammered out on that. I think he was wearing, like... I, I don't know. He was, it was like femme passing, like just like mm -hmm. heels and shit, just pounding white claw and starts leaning over the tracks on the subway. I'm like, yeah, it just, that sounds like New it's York, so man. like dangerous. Like you're so one bad step in New York, like you can be completely fucked. And it's not like people are going to be like, oh, we got to help this guy. It's like, no, like I've seen like, it's, but it's to the point where you see people ask for help. But they're like trying to get money out of you, or it's oh, yeah. a setup. And so when someone legitimately needs help, you're like, mm -mm, "You ain't, yeah, yeah, me. you're not getting shit. <laughs> you ain't getting shit. like, you know." I've seen someone like, "Help, help! Oh my god!" And I, I'm watching like from the other side, and then he like took this lady's wallet. I like took this lady's wallet. I'm like, "What the? Like, That's bullshit, dude." It's you know, 
I, I've had some fucked up thoughts about like the most fucked up thought I had was like I saw someone begging for money in the subway, and I'm like, you ain't doing that bad. You could afford the three dollars to get in here. Yeah. So it's 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 a crazy city. I don't I don't like. I felt the same thing. Like my first weekend out there, I was homeless. Uh, I had had a I had went to a spot that had gotten canceled, and it was just pouring rain. And I went to a bar. This is what almost broke me. I went to a bar, and the bar was like full. And so I just sat at a table at this pack bar by myself, drinking whiskey. And I'm like, I fucking hate it here. And then you just open up your phone and you see like other people having good times that you know. And you're like, no, you, no, I, you, I look back at Seattle and it's like you're doing like some theater in every with Corey McKay. Yeah, yeah. And someone's opening for here. And I'm just like, ah, just, you know. Well, it's an investment too, what you're doing. Like, it's, I mean, you're going to like basically college for this shit like you're yeah it's what you kind of have to do and a lot of people i i don't know when the right time is to make that move like that was do you feel like you made it too soon um i i just legitimately i think either you if you go and you're a bad comic then you're gonna have a longer road regardless because you have to get good yeah i'm good so it's like i'm rising this goes back up. to that confidence yeah, hey thing. man it's there man i think you gotta have supreme confidence in yourself and anything you do because i put my heart into this and if I don't believe I'm good at it, then what's the, why am I doing it? Okay, this is my question for you with this. Yeah. Who do you think is better than you? Uh, that's tough, man. I don't know. I mean, me in five years, that he's going to be a monster. No, um, like, can we, can we like, curve that down? Like, who, who started around the same time as me or? Just in stand, like, like, pros. Like, do you, when you, I want to. This conversation doesn't really happen very much in, in stand up, but like it's I, I feel like most people think they're good. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I was lucky early on was I'd spent a lot of time watching headliners yep, and I saw way. what good looks like. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not where I am. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to know the difference between, you know, who's better than you and who you're better than yeah. but thinking like when i hear i'm good mm -hmm. to me i kind of hear i'm satisfied with like what i'm doing oh, and God, i, I no. yeah <clears throat> no absolutely not okay and uh before i answer this i'll say i have supreme confidence in myself because i know my talent and i know the work i'm willing to put in mm -hmm. not saying oh yeah you know i'm better than all these comics now but it's like i know i'll get there so let's uh let's start with an easy one uh nate jackson better yeah. than me and when I look at Nate Jackson, I did a show with him this weekend. Did you? Yeah. We're down uh, Olmstead. Oh, nice. Yeah, we did Olmstead together. And episode kind of, 96 of this podcast, by the way, what was, Nate came on. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. But I remember the first time I saw Nate Jackson, and I was just like, I should quit. Yeah. I should quit comedy. There, there's no way I'm going to ever be in a breath of what he has. And I saw him Thursday, and I'm like, like, I'm not close, but it's like, you know, I kind of felt like at, I'm at the point where it's like I'm like a talented freshman in high school, and you see like the senior that's going D1, but you mm -hmm. look at him, it's like, all right, like I keep working, I can get there. That's kind of how I feel about like Nate Jackson now, and he's been doing it five times as long as me. So yeah, but that's kind of where I feel like he's like I'm like a talented freshman, shows my flashes, and then he's like the D1 recruit senior, but I'm like. All right. It's just funny, too, where, I mean, the episode I did with him, like, the night before, he did this, like, this huge, like, crowd with work interaction, and mm -hmm. then just, like, at the very end, snap back a callback. Like, it was sort of like the ball was way over here, and then you just fucking yank the chain, and, yep. it, it, and it, I Master I brought power. it up to him, and, like, he was like, that was nothing. Like, and I... It just it pissed me off because <laughs> it was he it was like such an afterthought to him, but like he he is I think you guys have some similarities in terms of like Nate never goes on stage, uh, like doubting himself at all, mm -hmm. and I I envy that skill set because like I I don't have that like I fucking I need to like for me to go on stage and be at my best I need to be having fun and a lot of times I think like the the concern about like oh future opportunities are tied to what's going to happen now mm -hmm. fucks with me 
And I'll say this. It's it's something that, one, I'm acting. I'm terrified up there. And, and there's certain crowds that's like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. But um, I had the uh, the benefit of, like, Chocolate Sundays, that competition. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, I got, like, the comedy, like, the comics dream. I win a competition. I'm at Laugh Factory at the greatest show they have at Laugh Factory. They sell out consistently every weekend. I'm up there. Kevin Hart sees my set. Kevin Hart daps me up. Mm -hmm. And I'm still <laughs> open mic in New York. <laughs> and 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 I had a and I had a good set. And it's like again, you're like, who like who is better than you? And that was the one time where I'm like, I I put I gave myself maybe like an A minus. Like I had more, but I had nerves. I was too happy to be there. But like A minus. Where I'm like, I felt like not many people can mess with my A minus. I had an A minus set, and I was the second worst comedian on that show, like easily. Yeah. Like there was a Zaynab Johnson. She did a joke about stamps, just standing. She could have been sitting down. I know you hate that, but she yeah. could have been sitting down. <laughs> did 15 minutes on stamps and this destruction, and I'm like, all right, I got work to do. Well, explain what chocolate sundays is to anybody like, so I, not everybody knows so chocolate sundays um i'm going to preface it with the respect i have for the show chocolate sundays i think is the modern day especially black comics version of bet uh comic view or def jam if you want to see like the next generation slash current generation of great <laughs> comics especially black ones you go to chocolate sundays is that laugh factory one of the most important rooms in the world is is it the successor to Fat Tuesdays? I, I, I'm people have asked me that before. I have no idea. Yeah, there's a really good documentary on net or Amazon, Amazon I think, yeah. uh, called Fat Tuesdays, and it's about sort of the growth of these rooms in mm -hmm. L.A. Like there was an underserved market for black comedy in L.A., and it was what Guy Tory that started that room. I, had, I just got Amazon Prime when I moved to New York. So I need you should to, check. I need it's to fucking that. good. Chappelle's in a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, I can't speak on the history of it. I can just speak on it now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, to me, it's like the greatest, like the greatest showcase you're going to get. And I'm in New York. I've seen the selling lineups and they're, they're good, but I'm like chocolate Sundays consistently. I think if you want to go showcase for showcase every week puts out the best, well, that's what Lions. it is too, though. Like it's, it's the LA best. is the showcase town. Like it's a yeah. New York's a workout. Like everybody's just trying to get work on their shit or mm -hmm. get managers and agents, right? Yeah, I think the the stereotype for New York. I mean, excuse me, for LA is you want to do your best stand up set. Someone magically sees you. Hey, you TV show. Yeah, you movie. What's what's your like? Is that what you want? Because you said you want to do, like, voice acting and shit. You know, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, like, people have asked me, like, yo, what do you want out of this? And I think for the first portion of my career, it's like, I just want it to get funny. I want it to have, like, the confidence you talk about. It's like, I walk on stage. If I if I bomb, I don't care. I mean, I care. But <laughs> it's, it's like, it doesn't shake my confidence in myself. And I'm there, and someone's like, well, okay, that's basic. Nate actually said, he's like, well, that's basic. If you want to be funny, you funny now. Have fun. Like, you got to find, like, what else you want to do. Where are you doing this to parlay it to? And I think definitely I want to do voices. I definitely want to do, like, voice acting on and off, character acting. Because mm -hmm. I think that's fun to me. Like, that's what I want. Like, I want someone to see or hear a story. And maybe I should move to L.A. as I'm talking to you. But, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, I know a few people that do that already now, and you got a great voice for. I mean, listen, the way you sound through this system, man. It's like, can <laughs> you, you do character stuff? Yeah, I can do character stuff. Like, I, I don't know if you want me to do one now, but yeah. I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you got any, and we can come back to Chocolate Sundays. And yeah, we can come. But. We can come back to that. So one thing I like to do just in life, because everyone has like their weird inside jokes. So what I like to do, like if something bad happens just in the world, I'll just be like, wah, wah, wah. that's pretty, dude. I think I actually have that. Oh wait, I want to hear this. This is dope. I'm just talking. Let's see. I. All right, so people want to eat. Well, I mean, no, I don't have it, it anymore. <laughs> uh, but we did have it. <laughs> 
That would have been dope. It was like, you do the original, then I do the next yeah. one. That would have been... Um, yeah, that's what we should have done. This, We're going to stop the podcast now and read <laughs> Any others? Uh, that's that's a sound I like. Uh, one thing that has always gotten traction, uh, I have this character, uh, Stephen Mays, I used to do a lot of uh, his videos. Mm -hmm. And this the voice that had people always like, I call it like the, I don't even know what he is. It's kind of like that grungy, like that old night. Like, my name's Rusty Hidden. No, that Quentin Jones is going to talk to Rusty right now. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm trying to get off the cigarettes. I'm trying to do what I need to do. I know, uh, do you need an alternator fix or anything like that? I'd love to do that for you. Uh, you know, I'm a master engineer. I failed in Michigan three times. I had to get him right because he got kicked out three times. I'm like, look here, Q. I'm going to get you this engineering degree. You're going to go on to that Microsoft. It's like that know. Kanye. I don't even know what it is. It's, yeah. It's, um. The it's, Kanye, or whatever album that, the mixtape, or the the workout, the workout tape album. I, I, I kind of see him as like, I don't know. I see him in like a jumpsuit spitting oh, yeah, yeah. tobacco. And um, so people really love when I do Rusty. And I'm like, oh, I should bring Rusty back in some way. Um, uh, uh, accents, which I'm like, every time I say I can do an accent and then I get you put try, on, Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, you try too hard. Who, but, who is it? So it's like Irish. I like to do Irish. So let me see. So if I was like, what kind of whiskey do you want? I'm trying to like bring it out. The Arab Irish ones don't open me. Well, I have to have my Tullamore Mordul. That's the best, you know, whiskey in the world there. I think between the price point, I, it's like. <laughs> you got to have the inspiration. Yeah, I got to have the inspiration. So when I do my accents, I uh, I kind of like think of a phrase. And for whatever one, like for my Irish ones, it's like the Arab Irish ones don't open you. And then once I'm into it, I can keep going with it. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. It kind of descends into Africa. Yeah, it like, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so, it. it it's, you uh, do a good African though. Can you do Burundi? Like Burundi sounds like an African kid to me. <laughs> like Burundi, grown ass man, but he's still like no bass. He's like, uh, and like, and it's like my voice is too deep to do Burundi. Yeah, yeah. Because you know when he's I he's got that laugh too. That's like very. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, I can't. Do <laughs> that's actually pretty good. <laughs> These guys, uh, no Burundi. That's me. Me and like me and Burundi have an interesting relationship. We just shit on each other all the time. Oh yeah. But have the utmost respect. Yeah, he's fucking, he's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, oh, you finally had a good set. It's like, fuck you, Barunji. He's, oh. I think the best moment I ever had with Barunji was he bombed at last. Because yeah. he was the, I think, yeah, he was the host. Mm -hmm. And he bombed. And then I tore it down. He was just like, well, you know. It's because you got the later set. Yeah, he's like, you know, they were liquored up. And I'm like, shut up, Barunji. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that he gets his shots in still. Yeah, oh no, he's he's he he will I could I could sell out uh it's not safe code. I could sell out a stadium. Yeah. He'd be like, ah, still not good. Yeah, you know? it wasn't two it, shows in one night. Yeah, it wasn't two shows. Like, did you do forty five? You yeah. like, he'll find a way. <laughs> so funny. Dude, Jim Jeffries was here last night and uh like 'cause we we did the show at Hereafter. Yeah. And he was doing two hours at the Paramount. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine fucking sitting and watching two hours of the same person? You know, because I'm in comedy, it's just we don't want to watch comedy that long. I, I don't have it in me. I mean, there are probably five comics that I would do that for. But mm -hmm. two hours is just like, what are you doing up there? The only person... Like, how much are you jerking yourself off at that point? Like, I... And I don't, I don't have anything against the guy personally, but, like, I wouldn't... To do that... Like, I don't know, fucking fifty weeks out of the year, whatever he's that's, doing, that's like so much time. I mean, we're both. How, how old are you in comedy? Uh, four years. Okay, so we're the, we're the same age, and so to us, it's like crazy. But I started, I think, a little after you, uh, July twenty eighteen for me. I don't even know the fucking. It was it was it's tied to my birthday. It was like uh, when I started comedy, it was just like I said a prayer. I was just a software engineer, and I was just like. I was, I think it was either 27, 28. And I was like, no, I'm going to be a software engineer in a shitty comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. But I, I said a prayer is just like software engineer is not for me. Yeah. I knew it in college. That's why I got kicked out three times. And I just prayed. I was like, let me find something else. Yeah. That gives me happiness. That gives me joy in this life. Bro, and I started crying. Like that was how I, I like had the worst depression of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this girl and I split up. And had a bunch of personal stuff happen. And I had signed up like on a whim to do Corey Michaelis's comedy class. Mm -hmm. And like I I knew a guy who had taken the class, but he didn't follow through with it. 
and I was so upset. And I was just like, like it was the night of the class and I had tears. I was like fucking suicidal. And I, was, mm -hmm. I just remember I was in the kitchen. And I just yell out, fuck it. I'm going to the comedy class. <laughs> and I was literally, I go there. I was the saddest person there. You know, I had tears in my, I mean, if you ask Corey, I, I don't know if he even remembers it, oh, but geez. I had to have been the weirdest fucking, I was a, I was, I'm going to DM him after this. Like, do you remember meeting Adam Tiller? For the oh, first I'm sure time? he does. It was like the weirdest energy ever. Cause I was <laughs> extreme. It would be the guy at a mic who's like, everybody's like, you gotta fucking be careful around that one. Like it's no, it's, I remember just early you, I was, I was scared. Cause you, you, you got the prison break look, but yeah, like you look like season four him where he was just ready to tee off on anybody. Like yeah. He had been in prison for two years. Like I was like, this dude's scary. Yeah. So I remember early Adam Tiller very well. And I also, I don't know. I just, I play basketball a lot. And like the type of people that I was around before, com like comedy people are so weird. Dude. Yeah. God damn it's it. like they, they take themselves super seriously, but it's also just like, this is, it's art. It's like theater and shit, you know? Like, I'm just like, what, I don't what understand. What's about comedy people is, like, we take ourselves so seriously with, like, no self-esteem. Yeah. It's, like, the weirdest, like, I, comics yeah, it's, are... Yeah, it's just fucking narcissism and ego. It's people that are obsessed with themselves and then get, like, even the ones that are super successful are fucking maniacs. Like, they're, I mean... Because like, there's always somebody it's always younger, someone, like, better, more, funnier. better. And yeah. that's why you see like all these like suicides of comics because it's like and you look at like you're here but they're looking like oh but I want this and it's it's a it's a terrible thing that I'll never quit doing yeah but I wanted to circle back to like you having that moment in finding comedy because I had like the same thing mm -hmm. my first time was Jai Tai okay and I Which remember like a it's postponed right now but it's an alt room in Seattle yeah and I remember. Um, I signed up for Stephen Mays again. Stephen Mays discovered me, mm -hmm. but he had hosted the weekend before and he met me. He's like, you should just try it. And I'm like, okay. Right after my birthday, I was like, fuck it. I'll try it. And then the day comes and I wasn't going to do it. I was scared. I'm like, I can't, you know, but, um, there was a woman living with me. Not like that. Actually, uh, she was staying with me cause she needed to find a new place. And so I go home after work and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not doing the comedy thing. She's like, you're going. I'm like, I'm not. She was, and she she has like a very annoying voice and she knew she could get under my skin and she wouldn't let me play Xbox. She was like, I'm going to annoy you all night if you don't go. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going. Fuck yeah. And I go, I had probably had like 12 drinks. This is deep drinking days for me. Yeah. And I remember I go up there. I know the jokes I told, but I don't remember saying them. And I go outside. We're about to Uber back to my place. And this guy pulls up in a red pickup truck. He just like pulls over to me. I almost shat myself because I'm from Detroit. And I'm yeah. like, this ain't good. Yeah. And he's like, hey, never stop doing comedy and just speeds down Broadway. I have no idea who that person is. Damn. There's been theorized that it was me from the future. <laughs> 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 like, no, you don't you fucking stop. But it was just like the elation I felt. It was rusty, that. dude. <laughs> hey, don't you ever stop doing that comedy. You tell them jokes now, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's crazy because uh there was this girl I took to Jai Tai, like probably the second or third time I went oh, there. Oh, Jesus. Let me, okay, let me hear it. I want to hear it. And uh, she, uh, I think she's Nigerian, but like she and I had sort of like seen each other for a while. And dude, when I started there, like I, I was so nervous for my set. I would go outside and I would, I would, like my concern was just being up there and not having something to say or not remembering mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Which, you know, it's so you can recite something. Congratulations. Yeah. It's not stand you up. You up there and did your monologue. Yeah. And yeah. it, I mean, arguably still today. But yeah, I mean, you are pretty close to your writing, I would say. Yeah, I'm much more looser than you. We can get to that, though. Yeah, yeah. But it, uh, anyway, I did the set and she, like, came up to me afterwards. It, like, we had, we were kind of, like, going different ways in life or whatever. And she said something to me. She's like, don't you should keep doing that. Like that looks good on you mm. and haven't talked to her again since. Cause some fucking shit fell through, but like she now sits near me at work and like won't, won't talk to me, but serious, those little things like that, man, they you push not you through. Stop doing the comedy. 
Adam, you get good at the comedy. You should not stop. Yeah. I, I just want to make an aside. I I think uh um there's just so much I love women and I think there's just so much power, especially for guys who are just down trying to figure something out. And there's just some like incredible power to just women just speaking like you should keep doing this. Like yeah. a woman either you have like a light crush on or you're dating, especially if like you're not like together, but you're like trying to impress her, but like a like a woman can speak so much life into a man when he's at his lowest. And they yeah. had no idea that they just did. Even one that's in the other room while we're recording this podcast. Like mm-hmm. it's just there. <laughs> but there's little dude, it's you that shit pushes you so far. Like ladies, you don't know like you give life through birth, but you also give life during life. Like I can say for sure every woman has spoken life into a guy when they didn't even know it. Yeah. And they helped him keep going or pursuing. So much greatness has been because you just have to, people like Barunji telling you how bad you're oh, doing yeah, all the time. You, hell, you got yourself it, telling you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like I remember after I bombed one time, a girl I was interested in, she was like, "No, you're really funny." Like I was just like, "Really?" And then like, mm, and then yeah, like, man. gets you going, man. You need that shit because it's fucking brutal. It really is. I mean, to this day, it still is. But so, uh, you you had a couple. Did you want to talk more about like chocolate Sundays or New York at all? Because you had a couple pin up pin. Oh, what did you call it? Well, pin in yeah, it? Yeah, pin in it. Well, what were the two pins? Let's, let's. The two pins were. Um, this actually ties back to New York because I went there and we were driving back from a club the other night and we were talking about like potential, like how accessible violence could be to comedians, like, like, oh, uh, my like God. how at any of these clubs, like it's really kind of terrifying how close the audience is and you were talking about Chappelle like going to the cellar like yeah it's I, I think there's a beautiful thing I was actually talking to somebody about this earlier where for whatever reason people forget we are in the building does that make sense to you oh yeah like people forget like we're on that stage and people think there's like an imaginary box hell some people think they're like watching Netflix mm-hmm. and the, what's always crazy to me is like uh, when I step off the stage, like if I step off the stage and like dap somebody up, or I like uh, I remember I was at a show at the Grizzly Pear, and this couple was like making out at the beginning of the show, and I'm the host, so I gotta like curb all that. So I literally step off the stage, walk through, like, hey yo, comedy show, like what the hell are you doing? Like it's midnight, just go fuck if you want to go fuck, but mm-hmm. don't do that here people and they're like moaning and stuff it's like yo get the yeah just no awareness but the other side of that is if it wasn't there it would be chaos Mm -hmm. because we have that imaginary box but i will go as far like everyone's insulted somebody on stage and probably pissed them off Mm -hmm. but because we have that kind of weird box around us they don't attack us yeah because they could well it almost happened at some clubs locally here yeah, no, uh, like, that's why they're so, checking for guns. Wait, who almost got attacked here? I mean, I, I don't want to put anybody on blast, but it, it was a club uh, like where the fucking comic was on stage and was roasting an audience member. And, and then it went too far. It was fine. It, it was going fine. And then the guy went to the bathroom and when he came back, the comic was like, you know, went back into it and he just the guy like flipped a switch and I guess like they went to kick him out and he had a piece on him. Wow. And, yeah, yeah. It's, there's no protection for us at all. Dude, like, it's, it's fucking crazy. And you know, I mean, and that's people like you and I, thing, you know, people like you and I, I mean, I know this podcast is going to be the biggest one we've done so far. Like absolutely. this is it you know, for you got sure. Jones here, you know? But there's nobody like, like, stalking us you know no. what i mean i mean i i don't i can't speak for you but no like, absolutely for not. these people like blue check mark type people where they're just walking into clubs in new york the audience is right there yeah and there's like they're closer than like they're as close as the laptop is to you right now they're you're walking past i remember my buddy went to the comedy store in la he's like yeah i walked past rogan down the hallway mm-hmm. when else can you do that with professional athletes or like I guess red carpet type stuff, but you need passes and shit. It would be so easy to just take out anyone. Yeah. I mean, how has that not happened yet? 
I this mean, is going to be we're not, predicted. Not, yeah, dude. I'm like, please don't. This is, <laughs> this is, no, this is, is going to explode if somebody dies. Can you imagine? Yeah, how like someone's like, yo. And Did this, you like, see on Fadim and Friends when they predicted it, this? It's like, uh, and I, I don't, I really don't know. how. I hope we're not inspiring it. No, that's. I mean, you know, you got that old. You still. I mean, you're a great guy. You got the MAGA look, and someone's like, yeah, you know what? I should take out. Yeah, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> You know, they wouldn't go after Dave Chappelle. I don't know who they would go after, but yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't happened today. Cause like, I haven't walked past him, but I've heard the stories where he's just chilling in the stand, and you could just walk in the stand. Yeah, you just walk in. You like uh, that's uh, what confuses shit out of me. You know, you you can really just walk anywhere. Hell, I've walked into the green room. Yeah, not booked, but people knew me. But it's like no one. If you just walk with enough confidence, mm-hmm. you can get to anybody i have to imagine something will happen to change that i, I mean hope, it's I, I, hope I hope not, not. but actually, it's, i hope not or maybe people just actually don't care about comedians as much as we want them to oh i and know people don't care about comedians i i mean my instagram numbers tell you that people don't care about not comedians. after this fucking episode though oh, bro man, it's no. gonna be <sighs> yeah no it's gonna be great after you know, millions of views but it's like I have put tight material on Instagram gets like a thousand views and 50 likes. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a shitty selfie get with someone with less followers get like 300 likes. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Yeah. I mean, people love selfies though. People love sex sells. You Mm -hmm. know who I feel bad for just in life? Because everyone says sex sells, but I feel bad for the women that sell sex and it's like not selling. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i feel they so have to bad. start dropping the price yeah they say like you <laughs> or just start like selling more it's like oh, i gotta show some market more. Show market some dynamics more. are taking effect and like these are like i'm not gonna say any names but i know women that like started only fans is and these are like hot women yeah and the price just keeps and going down like oh you know they start the only fans and they hear about all these women getting million like millions and millions and it's like they get that first flux a thirsty guys that like bought their only fans and it's like, all right i saw our tits and then they unsubscribe mm-hmm. and then it's like that desperation they're advertising on facebook and instagram and they make a twitter and then i've seen them give up yeah <laughs> that's a tough look i know a couple people that have actually that i had somebody hit me up wanting to do the podcast and like tout their only fans basically but then they canceled the only fan i'm fine with doing i want to yeah, get I mean, a bikini barista on here you should yeah i feel like the stories would be crazy man i i mean yeah just I, like weird dudes come and asking for well just the strangest shit but the thing is i feel like guys ask for strange shit but it's like they probably know the strange shit can't happen yeah so it's like to be the girl that doesn't do that it's like really awkward it's like no i'm just here to serve overpriced coffee <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then the bikini. guy's like, I can't get any milk with that coffee. Yeah, you want some cream? In my- yeah, okay. how about some whole milk from you? You got any whole milk? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's uh, I, I heard too recently, um, another comic told me she knew a bikini barista that like, I guess the majority, like every fucking 10th person that comes through there is a couple. And it's just like the wife or girl is curious to see what's going on here so like every 10th person they just have this super weird interaction where they serve them coffee and they're just like awkwardly kind of looking at them like they're at the zoo or something it's fucking (laughs) (laughs) it's like it's like you're just looking at like the the line like do something and the guy's got to pretend like he hasn't been there every day this week It'd be worse if it was like a couple. She's like, "Hi, Tom." It's like, ah, yeah, exactly. I told her this was my first. Tony time. Daniel has a fucking great bikini barista joke. If I, you, I've heard it. I forgot it though. Were you I, working with him last night? Yeah, I was working with Dude, him. Last he's night. fucking great. No, he, Tony I Daniel. I need to get him on the pod. Oh, he he has some like. He, I feel like you have a lot of young guests. You gotta get some OGs. I I had like Kermit and Gabe on, and those two were both good. But Brad Upton. That mm-hmm. Tony Daniel, I'm, I'm gonna get him on. Yeah, like a dirty, like get him again on here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just an old, <laughs> old road dirty, dog. The guy used to go down. I, I can't do him. Hennigan's not that country, but no, uh, no, yeah. But shout out to the women uh, in the bikini baristas doing the good work of uh, freeze, especially in the winter. So shout out to y'all. That's man. fucking crazy. All right, so 
I did ask you to bring a story on. Was mm -hmm. there anything else you wanted to talk about chocolate Sundays or, um, I, I did have one other pin in it topic of, yeah, let's, let's try and then I'll, I'll tell the story, man. Okay. People calling Christian McCaffrey the N word on the internet. That, <laughs> <laughs> and you were drinking when we, like oh, when we boy. were talking about I'm, this. I'm trying to summon the liquor. Like what was I? Well, we were talking about just no, we were talking people about fantasy football. Well, you said there were a lot of people on the internet that were like internet killers or like, like just like, I'm really, I'm trying to, like, we're going to have to cut this. Cause I, I, I remember I had something like deep yeah. in my stomach to say about it. it. You were just saying how a lot of people more or less, they have confidence on the internet to say ridiculous shit. Yeah. But in real life, they don't really. Then no, they're not about that. And <sighs> it's like fake threat. Yeah, it's it's like people getting. We were death talking threats. about fantasy football fantasy and football, how like if a kicker no, like misses, fantasy football, death threats. Yeah, death threats. People missing a field goal and like getting. And death I think threats. that tied into what we were talking about with comedy. Like, you, like you don't have to do a death threat to comedians. You can just do it, but they don't. I, I like I a lot of the threats play. online are are like more real than. Have you called Christian McCaffrey the N word? Uh I've been. I thought about it. He's on my team. <laughs> <laughs> he he's on my team, and he's. You know, he's projected to get 20 points a game. He's giving me, like, 12. And yeah. I'm, I've put the N.I. over. I'm like, at Christian McC N.I., nah, I'm just Just not dial gonna, it back. Just dial it back. All you right. know, again, supreme confidence. Every time <laughs> every time I, like, send, like, I, I kind of, like, curve my tweets already, like, just in case. Yeah. Because, like, you know, if anyone starts to get, do any, especially as a black man, if you get any type of clout or any type of anything, the Internet just wants to tear you down. And I'm like, I'm not gonna give them anything. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's getting to be a pretty cancel culture is is real. But they cancel people before they even make it. At least let yeah. me let me get a couple million, then cancel me. I can coast on life. Yeah, you know, I can do the shitty mics again because I got two million dollars. I don't care anymore. I'm yeah. just enjoying. My Would life. you keep doing shitty mics if you got two million dollars? No. If I got if I was a millionaire and canceled, I just produce my own stuff. Yeah. Or like try to start my own club or something like that. Yeah. Like I, I use the money. But what no, would you call the club? Q. Uh, Q. Uh, I was gonna say Q. Kill him. That's my online persona. <laughs> Quentin Jones's funny house. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I never thought about that. I'll probably name it after um. Chuckle my dad. fuckers. Not chuckle fuckers. I'll probably name it after my dad, Dakota. Like Dakota's comedy house. Uh, or Rose. My uh, like everyone in my family's middle name is Rose. Something like that. Okay. But uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that's what I would name it. <laughs> Story time, bro. Story Let's time. Let's cue it up. It's story time. It's story time with Adam. Yeah, it's story time. It's story time with Adam and friends. All right. I asked you to bring no compliment on that music. No, did, oh, did you not? You should put me dancing to it. That was some oh, good music, man. Yeah. That was a vibe. Yeah, man. they. It's Who made smooth. that? Uh, it's in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jake Allen, uh, Depressica, producer Henry helped with it, and then Tyree. So I feel like I have to tell like a, a happy story of triumph. I mean, whatever no. you. No. Funny. I just said, Quinn Jones, bring on a funny story. So whatever you want it to be. So uh, the people need a story. My friends, Quinn my Jones. friends love this story. So uh, it's about dating, pandemic dating. And so uh, I have a joke that I talk about, like women on the apps, they don't look like themselves, like in person. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I go out. On, so I match with this girl. And she looked incredible, like in her pictures and all that. And it's the pandemic. So you can't do anything. So my pandemic date was, oh, let's go to, uh, what's it called? Uh, Madrona Beach. I was like, hey, would you like a drink? We'll go to Madrona Beach. I'll get a bottle and some lemonade. We sit, we talk, you know, whatever. So this chick, she shows up, and she clearly had been eating most of the pandemic. And I'm just like, ah. And it was like at a time where no one else was there. So And we're like the only two black people in Seattle. So she knew it was me. I couldn't hide. I couldn't run. And I'm like, okay. Let me make like a, a good date experience out of this. Like I, I bought make the sure bottle. Make sure to stay up on yeah, this, okay. by the way. Just I'll so just people listening. Yeah. So I was like, let me just make a 
time of it. Like, I bought the drinks. We can talk, blah, 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 whatever. And so we go on a date, and she clearly liked me more than I liked her. Because I was like, okay, you know, I'll head home, and I can just take the bus. And she's like, no, I'll drive you home. And I'm just like, ah, okay. So we go on a date, and I, like, don't communicate with her. It's like, okay, I'm just going to kind of, like, politely ghost. It's one date. Don't talk to her anymore. But she starts talking to me like she's, like, sending me nudes. Hey, what are you doing? And one night she's like, like were they what? old nudes or the? I don't know. Like current. I mean, I mean the XL. Well, it was just like I feel like if you gain weight, you could still like kind of fake it because it was just like tits up. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm like, hey, she's she's got like extra nice chin. tits. Yeah, and a little extra chin, yeah. but you know, if you lean, I'm fat. I know. <laughs> like know I know the, how to. You, I know the, the trick. tricks. It's less. See, I'm trying to lean back and talk. But yeah. it's like if you lean back, my titties get you know smaller. My neck. So it's like, yeah, titties look great regardless. So. She's sending them to me, and then one day, it's like 10 o'clock. It was a Thursday. I don't know why I remember it was Thursday, but I remember. And she's like, what are you doing? And it's like, I would say August 2020. I'm doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, I'm literally, like, I'm at the point where I'm playing video games, and I'm like, I'm sick of playing video games. just looking at your own titties. Yeah, looking at my own titties, just like, she's like, oh, I want to come over. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, I don't like her. I'm doing nothing. Of course, I'll get laid. Yeah. Like, there's no problem. Of course, I'll get laid. So I'm like, all right, yeah, come over in an hour. I shower up, whatever. You know, I try to present, you know, a nice, you know, shower before you sleep with someone, everybody. Don't yeah. just be funky. And it's I was. Fucking gross. And I mean, it was pandemic. So I was like super funky because I was just marinating for like two days since the date or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so she comes over. Uh, we hook up, whatever. And I'm a gentleman. And so I'm walking her back to her car. I'm walking her back to her car. So I'm in front of her. She's like a little bit behind me. And this white woman on crutches, probably like 45, 50, she's like going past us. And she's like, you guys really need to be wearing masks. And I'm just like, I completely ignore. I was like, all right, Seattle white bitch. I don't care. <laughs> and I hear behind me, she's like, what did you say, bitch? And I kind of like keep walking. I'm like, okay, a little exchange of words. So I'm like, kind of like keep walking. And then I hear back, like, what do you want to do? We'll do something, bitch. And then I hear, like, a crash of one of the crutches. And I'm like, I should turn around right now. So I turn around, and honestly, in my head, how I see it, it's kind of like a cartoon, like a cartoon scuffle. And, like, literally the girl who I had hooked up with, like, she threw, like her sandal came out the scuffle and, like, went into the street. And across the street is like a Starbucks in the pandemic. So there's, like, 30 people outside the Starbucks that see this happen. And I'm like, what the? fuck so i like go and i break him up and like literally i pick the girl up and she's like kicking at this woman wait the girl was beating up yeah they were fighting the old lady the old lady on crutches and the girl i had just hooked up with were full-on bra fighting because the old white woman had said you need to be wearing masks and she just took umbrage to that god damn yeah like your face <laughs> right now is i just how don't i'm like trying to picture somebody that's on crutches how to even f what was she doing like i didn't see the beginning i just see like the the ball of fighting like you know how you see like a cartoon it's like dust and like that's how it kind of like looks yeah. to me and i'm like okay i gotta break this up and so like i pull like my girl off and like she's like kicking like yeah bitch you better learn who you talk to blah 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 blah, blah. and i was like oh my god this is like insane and so I pull her off and like someone from the Starbucks like hands her like the sandal that was thrown into the street. And I'm like, what do I say about this? How does she feel about this? So we get to her car and she's like, oh my God, that bitch had it coming, didn't she? And I'm just like, Whoa. like mind blown by this. I'm like this girl is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for you. I'm like, this girl is insane. And so I walk back, and the woman on crutches, she has her phone out. She's calling the police. So I, like, take a different route home. Yeah, yeah, you got to get the fuck out of there. And so I hop on Xbox because I'm like, okay, I definitely can't keep this girl around. And I don't know what made me think this, but I was just like, I can't just break up with her after that because this girl was legit insane. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to break up with her or stop or cut it off because we weren't dating. But it's like I didn't want to cut this off. Because she might think I snitched to the cops and she knows where I live. Like, like, that's how scared of this woman I am. Yeah. Like, she knows where I live and all this stuff. And you didn't wear a condom, right? Like, yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I <laughs> that was just a guess, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, mm. <laughs> Time will tell. Time will, no, I mean, oh, time, time better not tell. Yeah. This, this was two years ago. Okay. And uh, Lil' Q's out there. Oh, my God. Shout out to Lil' Q. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I hop on Xbox, and what I feel like sometimes your friends don't give you good advice because what I should have done is I should have texted her, like, hey, you know, that whole altercation and how you came out of it just made me uncomfortable. It's fucking weird. And I just, you know. Beat up an old lady. You beat up an old white woman on crutches because she told you to wear a mask. Yeah. Like, I should have been. During the heat of the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, August, yeah. Oh, yeah, heat of the pandemic. Yeah. And so I should have just been responsible. Like, hey, that's just like, I don't want to keep doing this because, you know, like, your fuse is too short, you know. And I think anyone would have understood that. But I was like, no, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> And I'm like, I can't break up with her after this. I need to see her again or like kind of like maybe see her like one, two more times and then cut it off. And I'm on Xbox. I'm talking to my boys. You know, like, yeah, man, that's a good idea. You can't cut the bitch off right now. You got to like hang around. Like, you know, one more, like hang out with her one more time. And then like after that, say, hey, it's not working and then cut it off. Yeah. Because then she won't tie you breaking up to her beating up this old lady, which it was actually kind of tied. She wasn't like winning. Yeah. It was like 55-45. That was my final question was who won. I mean, her wig. So the girl I was with, her wig was twisted. So it looked like she got the worst of it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay. If that lady wasn't on crutches, would she have won? I think she would have. Yeah. I think she would have. Sounds like it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. But I don't want to keep talking to her and all that. So I basically like arranged to see her like two days later. And the plan was to like to just hang out and not fuck, but it's I'm, of course you guys fuck. Yeah, of course we fuck. And here's here's where I messed up. So was it better sex? It after? was actually it was really good. Yeah, because you were like kind of afraid of her. It it wasn't like afraid, but I just I think it, it, like when you first start sleeping with someone, the first time it's kind of like a toss up, and then it's like second, third time that's when you really start to figure each other out. So we kind of like the, the sex was good. Yeah, it was and, the continuity that. Continuity. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what made it better. But I'm like, I remember the, really thinking the second time. I'm like, damn, like this pussy is better. I don't know. And I was like, it's gonna, it's, and was it's there like, a thought to yourself of maybe no, I should stick? No, around. I'm like, I'm like me <laughs> struggling. Like, it's gonna be a shame when I cut her <laughs> yeah, off in yeah. a couple of days. And so we 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 fuck, and then we have like we're having like you know the after. I call it aftercare is what the kink community calls it. But we're having like the after sex talk, and just the talk just got to me just like yeah i don't want to do this anymore and i had like we had fucked like 10 minutes prior yeah like i had just got out her vagina yeah <laughs> and um she handled it well because she's like all right well you know okay whatever. air quotes for anyone yeah, listening yeah air quotes uh she handled it well at the time so um i break up with her and so i'm like, all right cool i'm done i'm like playing xbox in like an hour Later, like the text start rolling. Oh, hey, man. you fat piece of shit. Because <laughs> made it about your weight immediately. No, every like, <laughs> when, like they, people make fat jokes about me. Like I haven't been. I've been fat my whole life. Yeah, they don't affect me at all. Okay, but I remember because uh, I had blocked her on Instagram. I was like, I'm we're done, and I'm blocking you on Instagram. And so that was like. The lightning bolt, like this nigga blocked me on Instagram. Ah! <laughs> and so <laughs> she's like, "Hey, you fat piece of shit! How are you gonna break? How are you gonna cut things off? You just hopped out of my vagina!" Like blah 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 blah. I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna block the phone number now." I think block the phone number, and then I think like she connected to Snapchat. Block the Snapchat. I'm not gonna hear from her. This bitch has a Google Voice number. <laughs> so like all day, like I think she left my just place. Getting notes from pigeons. No, I'm soon. getting like. <laughs> If I could show the, I think I have some of the thread where it's just like, you know, we only went on one day, so there's no way I know all this. She's like, I'm recently divorced, and you're the first person I hooked up with after breaking up with my oh, husband, shit. after I finalized. And I'm just like, I don't believe you. I think she's like, you need to watch out for who you hook up with. You can't just be dicking people down and yeah. leaving them. And I'm just like, what the fuck? There's, there's some people out there. Uh, it goes both ways, but just like when they get slighted it's like all of their previous mm -hmm. trauma and experiences just that gets put onto you and you're like what is this like and so i got some holes in my walls out over there i could show you from that 
Hey, man, we, we know about the infamous Adam Tiller. It's uh, Tiller. It's, I don't know. <laughs> so, like, she's so she has two Google Voice numbers because I'm I'm blocking them Jesus left and right. Christ. And so I'm like, if she went through the trouble of getting a third phone number to berate me all day, like she leaves like casual, like you hook up morning time, like eight nine in the morning. She's texting me all day. I done went to the gym. I done went grocery shopping. It's like do-lit, 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 do-lit. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick up. I'm going to call her. And so I call her, and I'm like, I'm going to give her until the time I finish making this chicken Alfredo. And so I'm like cooking the chicken Alfredo. He's like, yeah, you fat piece of shit. You need to blah, 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 blah. You need to really consider how you treat people and how you lead people on. And all I'm thinking is, like, I didn't like you at first. There was no leading. Yeah. How we got here was you texted me during the most boring time in human history with technology to give me some pussy, and I said yes. I didn't ask for and it. Like, as you're doing this, you're, like, tasting the Alfredo. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I was like, ooh, like, nah, needs that needs a little bit. <laughs> I like to put lemon pepper in my Alfredo. I ain't enough lemon pepper. Oh, I need some more spinach. Let me add some more spinach. Yeah, you're, like, reading text while you're no, on the phone. Oh, this is on the phone. I know, but, like, yeah. just, like, get a notification from ESPN. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I was, I was, I was, I was like, baseball or something. Like, someone was on the TV. Yeah. And then, so, I finally get the Alfredo right. I'm like, all right, we're good. And I'm like, hey, 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 is there anything else? And she's like, no. I guess I'm done. I'm like, cool. Click. Boop. Thankfully, she never called never me Never again. again. Never again. God damn. Hopefully, after hearing this, though. She'll come back. Yeah. I don't remember her name. I did see her on <laughs> Tinder afterward, and I was like, oh, yeah. right. No. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, no. God damn. Well, if she does fucking hit you up again, we'll have to have you on again Tell the Yeah, it'll be like, you know, two. I'll have like a fucking pirate eye or something. Yeah. So. I mean, uh, here's, I don't know what it says about me, but I, I mean, if I, if the, there were no repercussions, I'd sleep with her again. It was a good time. It was just, <laughs> it's something about crazy woman sex. That's like, Hey, it was, it was good. That's a, I mean, crazy woman sex is how I learned I like to be choked. So, you know, yeah, I feel like I just dropped the bomb and we're I'm not going to gonna sit the, here and pretend like I, I don't know what you're talking about. Cause I. Fucking, it's, it's, I know it's, exactly it's, what you're talking about. And, but it was a similar situation. I'll speed past the details. But she basically came over to hate fuck me. Yeah. And so we're on my couch, and she's, like, on top, and she's, like, riding me, and she just starts choking me out of rage. Mm-hmm. Not not the girl from the previous story. Completely different, different one. Different one. Completely different one. And she starts choking me out of rage. And at first, I was, like, going to, like, throw her off, and I was like, but I like this. Yeah. <laughs> She thinks she's punishing me, and I'm like, I'm getting harder. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, so, uh, yeah. That's Fuck yeah, man. Well, thank you for coming on. Hey, where man, can uh, be here, man. Where can people find your stuff online? Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I post most of my stuff. Instagram, uh, Q Kill em. Uh, On YouTube, Quentin Jones Comedy. I'm posting a lot more of my reels on there. And uh, I'm trying to, I think I want to get back into vlogging. I think that's kind of a loss art where mm-hmm. people like show snippets but i think it might be interesting like you know diary of a no-name comedian or yeah. something like that so uh how do you have, spell the insta q k i l l e m e m q cool. kill em. instagram q kill em. Uh, i do have twitter but it's really me complaining about sports mm-hmm. most of the time uh i have only fans q kill em. uh there's nothing on there and it costs twenty five dollars. So if you subscribe, has anyone subscribed? I have. I had. I've made fifty dollars <laughs> off my Instagram. Um, uh, of your OnlyFans. I mean, yeah, yeah, off my only, uh, off my OnlyFans. Uh, and it was clearly someone's alias. Yeah. And there was nothing there, and nothing came of it. But I was like, cool, fifty bucks. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, thanks for coming on, man. Happy uh, to be here. Anybody listening, make sure if you enjoyed this episode to rate and review us. If you watch this on YouTube, hit that notifications bell so you don't miss our content. Throw in a comment for Quentin or myself and hit that like button. It helps us with the algo. Uh, as always, follow us on Instagram at FNFPod. And we're going to leave you with Jaga. I just make the way as I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you want to walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement I just make the waves, I don't write them I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them Why you wanna walk and talk just like them?